Today I'm going to talk about how I trade these powerful consolidation patterns, the ascending triangle and its sister, the descending triangle. Stick around. Hi, this is Tim from TradingStrategyGuides.com. I want to wish you all a Merry Christmas this morning. I hope everyone is doing well. Most all the markets are closed today and it's been slow all week, so there's not much set up. So today's video is going to be very short. I thought I was going to show you a great moving average cross on palladium metal, but the trigger was yesterday and it was on less than 70% volume, so it was a no-go anyway. I'll take just a few minutes to show you the ascending triangle, then we'll have the trading maxim for the day. Remember to click the subscribe button and hit the bell so you don't miss any of these great videos. Let's talk about ascending triangles. Here's an example of an ascending triangle that we were tracking a few months ago on the S&P 500 E-mini futures. An ascending triangle consists of a strong resistance level, like this one right here. Strong levels are usually pretty obvious. There will be lots of wicks like these here and touches of the level. As you've probably heard me say too many times, a line is never just a line, it's always a zone. So you can expect the price to push through the level sometimes, like these candles here, and other times to just approach the level like these here and here. When I draw the line, I draw it with the intent of finding the price where the activity seems to be most prominent. I always draw it so there are no candle bodies above the line, so I can use the line as a trigger price. A close above the line will be my trade trigger. Just like all lines, this line is very subjective. You won't get it exactly right every single time. If you followed this channel a while, you'll know that I am willing to redraw a resistance line if I get head faked. A far less important line, but an important indicator of what is happening in this market, is the ascending portion of the triangle, this uptrend right here. This shows us that fewer and fewer traders are willing to see the price drop lower. Every time the price is pushed down, it gets pushed back up more quickly. Price gets trapped between these two lines, and the pressure to break the resistance level gets stronger and stronger until it finally breaks. If I get a push below this uptrend, I'll redraw it as long as the price goes back into the triangle, and of course as long as the volume continues to decline. I'll talk about volume and volatility shortly. Typically I'll look for a triangle pattern to break once it reaches, oh, two-thirds or three-quarters of completion. That's not to say that it won't break sooner like this example did right here. As a confirmation of the consolidation pattern, I like to see a decline in volume and volatility. I believe this represents boredom on the part of traders. Fewer traders are willing to participate in the consolidation and are sitting around waiting for it to break. I use the built-in trading view indicator for volume. Click on Indicators, select Built-ins, scroll down, and you'll see Volume. Just click on that, and the volume will appear in the same pane as the price action. Now, I don't like it in the same pane as the price action because you can see that it interferes with the candles here and here. So what I do now is I right click on the indicator, I select Move to, New Pane Below, and that separates the volume from the price action pane. I have the moving average set to 20 periods, which I believe is the default. Right click the indicator, select settings, click on inputs, and enter your MA length right here. Then click OK. I like using volume indicators with a moving average because I believe the volume is useless if you have no idea what the average volume is. And I typically use 20 periods as my moving average which is roughly four weeks of data for most markets. Volatility is trader speak for how much the price is moving around. For volatility, I use the average true range, or ATR, 
which is the average of the lengths of the last n candles. For my n, I use 14 periods, which I believe is the default for the trading view indicator. I use a shorter time period for the ATR so I get a little quicker idea of what the volatility is doing. 14 periods represents roughly three weeks worth of data for most markets. As you can see, both the volume and the volatility are in decline here and here. This little bit of frantic activity is an anomaly. An anomaly is just a hiccup. How do I know if it's an anomaly? Well, during the event, you can't know for sure. But after the event, you can see that the price action, volume, and volatility continued as it was before the event. Remember, there are always anomalies in the market. There's always a news event or a data release that's messing with these patterns. A brief hiccup in a pattern doesn't necessarily negate the pattern. If the price falls back into the pattern after these events, I'll consider the event an outlier and just ignore it. Now that I've explained what to look for in an ascending triangle, how do I trade them? Well, I simply buy a candle close above the resistance level. I've identified a level that has no candle bodies above it, so close above that level is significant. So what if it's a false breakout or a head fake? Well, I covered that in a video last week, I believe. I'll link that video in the description if you want to see the details. But I'll just briefly say that I look for volume on the breakout and I just go with it. If it closes back inside the consolidation, I take the loss and move on to keep the loss small. How I move on depends on what the chart does for the next few bars. If it settles back into the original triangle with the exception of the head fake and the volume and volatility continue to decline, then I'll redraw the resistance level to above the candle bodies on the head fake and look for another breakout. Otherwise, I'll just call it a blown pattern and we'll look for other opportunities. And of course, everything I just said about the ascending triangle also applies to a descending triangle. Just look for a strong support level and look for the break to the downside. Let's take a look at today's trading maxim. A maxim is a general truth, fundamental principle, rule of conduct, or a proverbial saying. The purpose of my maxims is to motivate me to discipline in trading as well as other areas of my life. I suggest you start your own list of maxims, things that you can say to yourself while you're trading or doing life to make sure you always do the right thing. Feel free to borrow from my list. And today, Tim's trading maxim number 58, our greatest glory is not in never falling, but in rising every time we fall. Confucius. <laughs> yep, Confucius said it, fall down, get back up. That is the only way we will have success. Failure is our best teacher. If you've never failed, then you've never pushed yourself beyond your limits. Failure is not permanent. It ends just as soon as you get back up to try again. Try to keep that time as short as possible. And sign up for my free trading picks email list so you don't miss any of these great picks. I send out about three or four trading picks a week, except maybe for this week, <laughs> from all different markets, and you'll get to see them first. And the best thing is, it's free. I'll put the link below this video. I promised today's video would be short, didn't I? <laughs> Be sure to come back to Trading Strategy Guide's YouTube channel every week on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 3 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time for my new videos, most of which will be much longer than this one. <laughs> Don't hesitate to ask any questions you may have. I'll either answer your question right in the comments or in a training video or both. And remember, the only stupid question is the unasked one. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and don't forget to hit the thumbs up below. Have a great remainder of your week, and I'll see you next time.